Hello, this is the Bible in fewer words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 160, Nehemiah, chapters 1 through 13. If you enjoy this podcast and the Skeptic Sanitated Bible website, consider supporting us at patreon.com forward slash BFW. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. So yesterday we finished a whole book. Yes, we did. And today we're going to try to replicate that. Yeah, another book. Finish a whole book. I do have one thing I wanted to say about the last episode. Mm-hmm. What is that? Remember how we were commenting on King of Kings? Yes. How? What king was it? It was King Artaxerxes. Artaxerxes was King of Kings. Mm-hmm. Which sounded kind of strange because we're used to thinking the king of kings being Jesus. Yes. But in the Bible, sometimes the really important kings are called king of kings. Okay. For instance, in Daniel and Ezekiel, Nebuchadnezzar is called king of kings. Really? Yeah. Huh. But in the New Testament, when that phrase is used, it always refers to Jesus. Okay. In fact, in one of my favorite verses... In the book of Revelation, they say that Jesus, I'm kind of giving something away because that's the last book we're going to cover. Go ahead. We'll probably forget it by then. <laughs> okay. Or not. <laughs> but Jesus has the King of Kings written on his thigh. Really? Yeah. Like a a the, tattoo. Uh-huh, like a tattoo. The King of Kings on one thigh, I guess. Yeah. And the Lord of Lords on the other. That is very bizarre. Yeah. Anyway, just a little piece of trivia there about (laughs) King of Kings. And now we can get back to the story Okay. in Nehemiah, a new book. All right. So there are 13 chapters. Mm -hmm. And you think we can get through? If we, yeah. If we we start. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Chapter one. These are the words of Nehemiah. I was in the Shushan palace when some men of Judah came by to visit. I asked them about the Jews that had escaped from Babylon. Is that true? I thought Jews didn't escape, but they were taken prisoner. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Escaped from Babylon. They had left Babylon. So I guess that he's talking about Sushan is the capital for the Persian Empire. Mm-hmm. And so he is asking about the Jews in Jerusalem. Yeah. Because he's heard that they have escaped from Babylon. They've returned from Babylon. Oh, so I was confusing that with when they were taken prisoners. You know, this is when they're this is when they're returning to Judah. All right. They said to me, "The Jews are in big trouble. The wall of Jerusalem has fallen, and its gate has burned." And when I heard this, I sat down for several days while I wept, fasted, and prayed. I said to God, "O great and terrible God, open your eyes and ears." so that you can see and hear me. You told us to obey you and threatened to punish us if we didn't. So listen to my prayer, because I am the king's cupbearer. Well, I was just about to ask you, who the heck is Nehemiah anyway? Yeah, he's the king's (laughs) cupbearer. And what does that mean, servant? I think he brings his wine when he wants to drink. Oh, so his drinking buddy. <laughs> I don't know if he gets to drink or not, but he brings the cup that, of wine for the king when he's thirsty, I guess. All right. That still doesn't really explain to me who Nehemiah is in the big scheme of things. So there's a king whose name is... Oh, good question. This would be the king of Persia, probably, one of, probably the king of kings that we were talking about before. Artaxerxes. <laughs> Yeah, we'll say that. It it doesn't really say, I don't think. No. And who was Cyrus? Wasn't he a king? Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) See, we weren't going to talk about that. No, we're not going to talk about it. It's too confusing. Okay. (laughs) So, um, Nehemiah is the cupbearer of a king in Persia. Yeah. All right. Chapter 2. One day when I was feeling sad, I gave some wine to the king. Oh, good. He's doing his job there, I guess. Yeah. He'd never seen me sad before. He said to me, Why are you so sad? You're not sick, are you? Something must be bothering you. I said to him, I'm sad because Jerusalem is in ruins. He said, What would you like me to do about it? I answered, Let me return to Jerusalem so I can rebuild it. 
Okay, so Jerusalem is in ruins. The city of Jerusalem or the temple? What is he talking about? I think about? both. Oh. He wants to go and rebuild Jerusalem, and especially the wall. He's a wall builder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the king allowed me to go to Jerusalem, wrote letters to the governors, and provided wood to rebuild the wall of the city. So I went to Jerusalem, and I was there three days. One night, I passed by the dragon well and the dung port and looked at the walls of Jerusalem, which had fallen, and the burn gates. So he's kind of assessing the situation. Mm-hmm. I said to the Jews, Look at Jerusalem. Its wall has fallen, and its gate has burned. Let's rebuild the wall. So I have a question, Steve. Yeah. In Ezra, uh -huh. weren't we talking about the Jews going back to rebuild the temple? Yes. So they got there and they're not doing anything? Well, I'm not sure how this matches up with the book of Ezra. Okay. It's talking about the same time period. Mm -hmm. Two different guys. Ezra is a priest. It's Nehemiah is more of an administrator type person. Oh, okay. They're both involved in the Jews returning to Jerusalem and rebuilding Jerusalem, and rebuilding the wall, rebuilding the temple, all, all that right. effort. Okay. So chapter 3, I'm leaving out because it's uh, just talking about rebuilding the sheep gate, the fish gate, and the dung gate, and other important matters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... It's kind of boring. Yeah. I don't know what the fish gate would be. Uh, I, I guess it must be bringing fish in through a gate. And yeah. Dung gate, I guess, is taking dung through a gate. <laughs> That's and a probably just going in one direction. I don't know. Dung anyway, gate. there's a lot of They're repairing things. those gates. Okay. Right? And then chapter four. When Sanbalat heard that we were building a wall, he was angry and mocked us, saying, What are these feeble Jews up to? Tobiah, who was with him, said, Heck, even a fox could knock down their wall. <laughs> Sounds like a fairy tale. <laughs> Um, okay, so who's Sambalat and uh, Tobiah? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> They're just some guys. guys. Some guys that didn't like what was going on. They didn't like the way they were building that wall. Complaining. Uh, but I said, and this is Nehemiah, uh -huh. Oh God, they hate us. Let's hate them back. <laughs> so we built the wall. When Sambalat and Tobiah heard about the wall, they were angry. And they conspired to fight against Jerusalem. I said to the rulers and people, don't be afraid of them. Remember that God is great and terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so half of the people returned to work. The other half held spears, shields, and bows. Those who built the wall used one hand for work and the other hand held the weapon. Okay, that's bizarre. How are you going to work like that? I don't know. I don't think that would work too well. No. We were all so busy that we slept in our clothes. Hmm. And that's all I have to say about that. So... Next chapter is chapter 5. While we were building the wall, the people complained about the Jews who were in power. They said, We have many children that we need to feed. We've mortgaged our land and houses to pay for food. We've had to borrow money to pay taxes to the king, and our children have been forced to work for others. I, Nehemiah, was angry when I heard this. So I rebuked the leaders for their usury, saying, why have you sold our people to others? Give the people back their land, houses, and money that you took from them. And the leader said, Okay, we promise to do that. Then I shook my lap and said, If you don't keep your promise, God will shake out all of the money from your pockets. And the people said, Amen. And the leaders did what they said they'd do. May God reward me for all the good that I have done for the people. And that's Nehemiah talking. Uh -huh. <laughs> Aren't I great? Yeah. <laughs> okay, chapter 6. The wall is finished. Yeah, so chapter 6 is all about building the wall, and I, I'm just leaving that out. But they finished the wall. And chapter 7 is the same as we had before in Ezra. Remember, we had a list of people returning from Babylon. We have the same list of people given here. The names are the same, uh -huh. but the numbers are different. And that, ladies and gentlemen... Just saved us 73 verses. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Sure. <laughs> okay, so chapter 8. Everyone in Israel listened to Ezra as he read the Torah to them. So I guess Ezra and Nehemiah are there together. Yes, I think so. He blessed God and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, while they lifted their hands, bowed their heads, and touched their faces to the ground. 
Nehemiah and Ezra said to the people, This is a holy day. Don't mourn or weep. Everyone was weeping when they heard the words of the law. So while Ezra was reading the Torah to them, they're bawling their eyes out. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and so the Torah, that's the first five books of the Bible. So yes. take a while. <laughs> then they said, go and eat the fat, drink the sweet, and don't be sorry. So all the people ate, drank, and were happy. Well, that's nice. Yeah, I don't know what drinking the sweet is. Well, you know, put a little honey in some water yeah, or maybe. some wine. It might be wine. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The people made booths and sat under the booths. There was a very great gladness. So I guess that might be just the shade umbrella. You know, I've never understood this booth thing. And really? so I didn't know how to translate it, so I just <laughs> kept it as booth. But they made them and sat under them. Uh -huh. And Ezra read the book of the law for seven days. And that's the Torah. Yeah. Okay, chapter 9. Everyone in Israel fasted, wore sackcloth, and put dirt on themselves. They separated themselves from foreigners and confessed their sins. For three hours they stood and read God's book of the law. Then they confessed and worshipped God for another three hours. Are they getting up to have something to eat or drink or bathe or something? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. After they were done with that, the Levites cried out with a loud voice and said a long prayer. Yeah, which I'm leaving out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> There's about 30, 35 verses there of their prayer. And then chapter 10 is a list of people who agreed not to intermarry with non-Israelites. Uh-huh, we had that in Ezra, uh -huh. where they had already married Yeah, foreigners. I'm not sure if it's the same list, but there's a list here, and I think there was a list there. Yeah. Just a list of people that said, hey, I, I won't. They kind of signed the petition, I guess. I think back then, in Ezra, they swore that they wouldn't. Well, maybe they did here, too. Okay. So, chapter 11. The people cast lots to determine who will live in Jerusalem. And chapter 12 is a list of priests and Levites... And also, they dedicate the wall. Okay. And da 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 chapter 13. Yeah. That day, they read in the book of Moses that they should not allow any Ammonites and Moabites to enter their congregation forever. Because they didn't give the Israelites food and water, but hired Balaam to curse them. Even though God turned the curse into a blessing. Remember that story about Balaam? Did Balaam have a donkey? He did. A talking donkey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the donkey didn't go forward because there was an, an angel, angel there. stopping yeah. him. from. It was a very confusing story. Yes. And we'll probably get it even more confused if we try to repeat it okay. again. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, did Balaam curse them? No, he didn't. He refused to. Uh-huh. They wanted him to. Yeah. But he didn't. Okay. Very weird. Mm-hmm. So, verse 23, But some men married women from Ashdod, Ammon, and Moab, and their children were speaking foreign languages. So I contended with them, this is Nehemiah speaking, mm -hmm. and cursed them, and smote some of them, and plucked off their hair, and made them swear by God, and said to them, You shall not give your daughters to their sons, nor take their daughters to your sons, or for yourselves. Didn't Solomon sin by doing these things? God loved him, but outlandish women made him sing. <laughs> made him I sing? Mean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> they made him sin. It is a great evil to marry strange wives. Remember them, O God, because they have defiled the priesthood. Remember me, O oh God, for all the good things I've done. <laughs> it's kind of humble, that Nehemiah. Yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> and that's the end of that. It's interesting that they, they both uh, were upset by the people intermarrying, mm -hmm. um, but they had different reactions to it. Remember what Ezra did? Ezra made them divorce their wives and leave their children. Yeah, but what did he do to himself? Uh, oh, he pulled out his own hair. And beard. And beard. Yeah. Whereas <laughs> Nehemiah... Uh-huh hit them, yeah, and cursed them, mm -hmm. and he plucked out their hair. Did he? Yeah. That is pretty awful. I mean, it would be awful to do it to yourself, but to do it to other people. Yeah. It's weird. I mean, can it even be done? Oh, yeah. Pull out people's hair? <laughs> yeah, it can be done. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to think about that. 
<laughs> All right. Hey, well, thanks, Steve, for getting us through another book in yeah, one episode. That's right. That's amazing. It is. Thank you. Uh-huh. And listeners, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.